Hello and welcome. This is our second video in the introduction to Lean series. If you've not seen our first video, I request you to go back and see it once before you start playing this video. In this video, we are going to discuss the eight ways of Lean and what differentiates Toyota's production system compared to the other production systems. Let's get started. So let's deep dive a little further into the types of waste. There are eight types of waste that resist value creation. First one is transportation, which is unnecessary movement of products. So you have a product, you have a big shop floor, but you are moving it unnecessarily from one place to another, which is not satisfying the value creation criteria. Second is inventory. So all the raw material, all the work in process step, which is unfinished product, not dispatched finished goods fall into this category. Third is motion. Poor workplace ergonomics, people or equipment moving more than the requirement. So unnecessary movement of people and equipment. As you must see, transportation and motion are closely connected. The difference is that motion involves people as well as equipment. Transportation might mostly be related to the finished products. Fourth one is wait, which is nothing but the delay. Waiting for the next production step. Interruptions of production during the shift change. Fifth one is overproduction. So which is nothing but production ahead of its demand. You are manufacturing products, the products are ready and you're wasting a lot of time, resources and space to store those products as those are not going to get shipped immediately. They were never demanded by the customer. And overproduction is often the root cause of other wastes. Overprocessing, it results from poor product design. So you're trying to work on a feature or fine tune a product to an extent which is not even demanded by the customer. It's not going to add any value to the customer. Seventh one is defects, effort involved in inspecting and fixing defects. Just to give you a background, prior to the Second World War era, there was a lot of focus on inspection and quality was primarily driven through inspection. If something is manufactured, it needs to be audited. And if there are defects, they need to be corrected before we ship it to the customer, which is very good. But why should we have a defect in the first place? That defect causes a lot of rework. Eighth one is under utilization of knowledge. This was added later, but it makes a lot of sense in a lot of scenarios. And what it covers is that a skilled person performing tasks that require much lower skill or his inputs of for process improvement are being ignored while decision making. So the right person, say for example, you are a senior person and you have a person below you who doesn't know how to draft an email. Now, every time that he writes an email, you're proofreading it and correcting it. That's a waste of your time and talent if you're not into the editing business. Likewise, if you are the skilled labor, but your inputs and experience is not taken into account by the management while making decisions, that's again a waste of knowledge or underutilization of knowledge. So this covers the eight wastes of lean. So far, we have discussed the difference between one at a time production versus a batch production where Toyota chose one at a time production and Toyota further emphasized on identifying and eliminating waste. But there is a lot more that differentiates Toyota's production system compared to other production systems. Number one, planning and production. At Toyota, these are not segregated job roles. They allow the doers to contribute their ideas for improvement. Now, back in the US, it was observed that planning and production were seen as two separate jobs. So there would be a team of highly educated people who will do the production planning and the product designing. And then there will be these low skill labor who will do all the assembly and mechanical job. Whereas Toyota advocated that the people who work more closely on the product are the people who should be giving right inputs. Second point is that the standards at Toyota were always dynamic. 
Now this is very different from what you hear at most of the places. Most of the places will follow a standard which would be a thick manual and people only have heard about it or have referred to some sections of it. At Toyota, they emphasize that we know we will never achieve perfection, but it is always worth trying. They drove standards through visual management rather than heavy manuals. So if you were visiting a Toyota production floor, you will see a lot of visuals placed. Visuals related to the processes to be followed, visuals related to the areas which have been dedicated for certain tasks in particular. It was not to be referred through a manual, but it was to be seen on the production floor. Third one is stop production so that the production never stops. What it means is that in no way a defective product should ever be shipped to a customer. The moment a frontliner identifies a defect in the product, he should immediately stop the production line and get it rectified. Fourth was pull system. So Toyota strongly emphasized that we should never produce until the customer demands. Whereas in batch production system, it was always about manufacturing as many as you can. So it was a push system where you produce more than what's even demanded and you want to store it so that whenever there is a demand in future, you'll be able to cater to it. Now this often backfires in case of products which witness a lot of change in technology. Today, if you manufacture in bulk and if the technology changes overnight, you'll be sitting with a lot of finished products which will be obsolete for the markets. And the fifth one was systems thinking. This was originally introduced by Sir Edward Deming and it emphasizes that improving the efficiency of specific units or departments alone does not necessarily maximize the overall efficiency. So while a specific unit might be coming back and telling you a success story of their compliance, the product still is not that unit or department's deliverable alone. An excellent product is an outcome of a complete system and not independent units. That's where a system approach or system thinking plays an important role. This covers our introduction to Lean. Hope you like this video and it helps you. Thank you.